Hello everyone. My name is Shada Mohammed. Currently working in Department of Pharmaceutical Technology at International Medical University, Malaysia. So first of all, I would like to thank organizer of this conference for inviting me as a speaker to deliver talk on nanomedicine. So title of my presentation is Brain Targeted Nanoparticulate Drug Delivery System for Bromocryptin in the Treatment of Parkinsonism. So let us start with the background of the study. My research has four important component and each component is having rationale of selection. So first I will show you about the disease. After that, on conjunction to the disease, the drug I have selected bromocryptine and approach we have you are using here is polymeric nanoparticle and the route of administration is intranasal system for nose to brain targeting. Now, Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder. We all know and it's associated with the degeneration of neurons in the substantia nigra and because of that there is a depletion of dopamine a neurotransmitter and the symptoms associated with dopamine is tremor muscular rigidity and bradykinesia if you talk about the pathogenesis pathogenesis is unclear still and perhaps not a single factor responsible for parkinson maybe multifactorial like is aging is one of the factor our mitochondrial dysfunction, oxidative stress, these are the reason behind the pathogenesis. But still, the pathogenesis of PD is still unclear. So, if you see the epidemiology, the number of individuals with PD over age of 15 in Europe and outside Europe is 4.1 and 4.6 million in 2005. But I is predicted to increase between 8.7 or 9.3 million by 2030. So, really we need to develop some therapeutics that reverse or halt the progress of the disease now we we know that levodopa is the gold standard in the treatment of parkinson but the problem with the levodopa clinically is motor complication and that motor complication is because of erratic oral absorp uh, absorption and because of the erratic absorption the motor fluctuation and dyskinesia is there and this leads to the problem with using levodopa but still we are using the levodopa as a gold standard so therefore to improve this motor complication we we need to have search for some other drug in my study i have selected dopamine agonist bromocryptin there are various agonists available like ropinirol bromocryptin so here we are using the bromocryptin the good thing about the bromocryptin why we are using in uh, parkinson disease is is an ergot derivative and it's with dopamine receptor agonist activity and it's widely used clinically to delay or minimize the motor fluctuation associated with the long-term use of levodopa in the treatment of PD. Another important point regarding the bromocryptin that it directly or indirectly protect dopaminergic cell and additional point that BR bromocryptin is reported to have antioxidant property as well. But the problem with the bromocryptin is it could not cross the blood brain barrier and it has it shows the hepatic fast metabolism and because of this fast fast metabolism it has very low viability six percent and frequent dosing is there and pulsatile dopaminergic stimulation we want to have a continuous dopaminergic stimulation rather than pulsatile one and non-specific targeting whenever we are giving the bromocryptine it's uh, distributed to non uh, non-site also as compared to the brain so that's why this is a major problem therefore th there is a need for improved delivery system which would provide long-lasting sustained release formulation of bromocryptine and increase the viability of bromocryptine in brain and provide site specific deposition in the brain so even in, in, in my slide i'm using brc actually it's a bromocryptine so don't get confused with that now we are using the intranasal route for brain targeting and why we have chosen intranasal route for brain targeting the very good very important point is that direct administration of brain is possible because in nose there is no blood brain barrier so drug can easily go can pass to the brain bypassing the blood brain barrier because there is two nerves are available like olfactory nerves and the trigeminal nerves which so take the drug to the brain so that's why we are we have chosen the intranasal route for direct nose to brain targeting 
Second, self medication is possible, rapid absorption and onset effect is there, and easy accessible, it's non invasive route, and it's minimizing the peripheral drug side effect because less amount of drug is going to the system exposure. So it's minimizing the side effects. Higher viability is available, and thus we are using lower dose of drug. And uh, does not have any complex formulation requirement. It means you you no need to have a very a big formulation requirement for making intranasal formulation. Now, but the problem with the intranasal route also is the harsh environment of nasal cavity. And second, what we have noted that the particle enter into the nose has a very less resident time because of mucociliary clearance and it pass out within 15 to 20 minutes. So we need to have something which can stick to that nasal cavity, nasal, nasal mucosa and stay there for a long time. So we need to have something which can stick to the mucosa. For that, we are searching some mucoadhesive kind of polymer or something. So before searching for the mucoadhesive polymer, we are searching for an approach which approach we should use. There are various approaches available or carrier systems available for the delivery of a drug. So here in our study, we have selected polymeric nanoparticle and in that polymeric nanoparticle, we have used chitosan as a polymer. So what is the, what is the benefit of using this polymeric nanoparticle? It's protect the encapsulated drug from the environment. It has high drug loading capacity, a small diameter. It helps in to transport drug through the olfactory neurons and High surface area will release the drug faster as compared to carrier and surface modification is easily possible for effective CNS targeting. Now chitosan polymer, what is the benefit of using chitosan? We know that it is a mucodensive polymer, so it will increase the residence time in the, uh, of nanoparticle in the nasal mucosa and it achieve more intimate contact with the nasal mucosa. It allow longer absorption time and absorption it acts as an absorption enhancer and help in the opening of the tight junction between the epithelial cell now come to the objective of my study we have divided into two objective one is we have to develop then we optimize and characterize the mucodesive nanoparticle of bromocryptine and second we have to do in vivo study in animal model so nanoparticle formulation and optimization we have used ionic gelation method, which is very common method if you are making nanoparticle by using the chitosan, ionic gelation is the choice. So in that case, you know that uh, these are the materials which we are using chitosans, glacial acetic acid we are using. Why? Because the chitosan is not soluble in our echo solution. So we dissolve in the glacial acetic acid solution and tripolyphosphate act as a crosslinker here. So this is the schematic diagrams of ionic gelation method. In this case, we have uh, we kept the TPP solution and this is chitosan solution and we are dropping the TPP solution very slowly and after 30 minutes, the nanoparticle will be prepared and we have to ultra centrifuge and then we'll get the pellet and we have to freeze dry. Now, this is this table shows the optimized parameter of chitosan nanoparticle and BRC loaded chitosan nanoparticle. We have placebo and we have the drug loaded nanoparticle so we are not sure here in this slide i'm not going to give details about the optimization and all but just i will give the brief brief where i have optimized so we have optimized the chitosan tpp concentration we have optimized the stirring speed we have optimized the time of rotation ph of solution and concentration and and we have kept the concentration of cs at 3.33 to 1 fixed we have fixed that ratio and and all the all the aspects we have fixed and after that we got these result a particle size is 157.4 and loaded nanoparticle shows 161 so although not significant difference between these two data if you see the pdi is 0.3 and 0.442 that is also not much uh, there is a significant difference but it's less than 0.5 which is acceptable in case of poly polydispersity index because when your particle size distribution is not uniform then you have a altered pharmacokinetic profile which is again not good for our brain targeting if you see the stability of our formulation is showing a very good Jetta potential value of 40.32 and we know that the, the, the stability of uh, nanoparticle it should be plus minus 30 millivolt so our value is more than 
30 it's quite a stable formulation the entrapment efficiency is also very good 84.26 lug loading is also very good and if you see the mucodation also showing more than 50 percent 61.9 percent and process yields are also 60.82 the yield is also very good so in this basis we have optimized and we have used for our in vivo study and all but before that i will show you the figure of this particle size these two and you see the 10 images of cytosine nanoparticle and brc loaded nanoparticle it's showing a very 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 clear image of and you can say that this is a spherical a spherical image of nanoparticle now in vivo study so in in vivo study we have we did uh, two things one is pharmacodynamic and second is pharmacokinetic so if you see the graph in pharmacokinetic study so we have we did pharmacokinetic study in plasma also and in uh, brain concentration also brain tissue also and this is the blue color and this red color is belongs to iv administration and this blue color uh, this green color is belongs to intranasal administration means we are comparing with the iv as well as the drug solution intranasally and then we have to show that which one is the better formulation so when we when we did all this thing so the most important point here is the brain blood ratio if you see the brain blood ratio the brain blood ratio of the this blue color is a nanoparticle and this uh, red color is for intranasal solution and this green color is for iv if you see these values the brain blood ratio is always uh, at 0.5 hour, 1 hour, or 2 hour is always more for the chitosan nanoparticle, which indicate that drug is reaching to the brain through nose to through uh, through intranasal route. And if you see the DTI, DTI, and DTE and DTP, then it's also very clear that our drug is reaching to the brain very easily. And DTI is actually drug therapeutic index, and DTE is the drug therapeutic efficiency, and DTP tells about the diet transport percentage of means how much drug is going from nose to brain rather than going from the systemic to the brain now pharmacodynamic study so we did two things one is the behavioral study and second is our biochemical estimation in behavioral study we did two parameter one is catalepsy and second is the echinacea and we have divided into four five group group one two three four five having normal saline second group having haloperidol orally we have injected and one more thing here i want to add so there are various models available for uh, inducing parkinsonism like osda model rotinone model but here we have induced induced this very simple drug induced model and we know that haloperidol is an antipsychotic agent and which uh, which shows the extra pyramidal side effects that's why we have used haloperidol here and this uh, haloperidol, haloperidol has shown very good result also if you see the table in catalepsy and echinacea uh, test you see the group 2 is uh, is haloperidol induced one and is showing very good result in terms of inducing the catalepsy so animal cannot move and showing the catalepsy behavior but you see the saline is very less but if you see the group 5 means co-treated with the chitosan nanoparticle drug loaded chitosan nanoparticle is showing very significant difference between the group 2 and group 5 and if you see the formula in K kinesia also group 5 is showing a very significant difference although these group 3 4 5 all are showing the significant difference as compared to group 2 but group 5 is showing more significant difference statistically and this shows that this shows that there is a reversal in catalepsy and echinacea if you are inducing with the if you are giving the chitosan nanoparticle in the form of if you're giving the chitosan uh, nanoparticle drug loaded chitosan nanoparticle but if you are administering through the oral route it's showing some decrease in the uh, echinacea behavior or uh, cataleptic behavior but not much as compared to our formulation now if you see the biochemical chemical estimation and we know that in uh, in biochemical uh, in case of biochemical estimation glutathione we we did glutathione estimation and the t-bars thigh bar which is uh, estimation in case of oxidative stress if you, if it is oxidative stress then there is a increase in the lipid peroxide which indicate a significant increase in the t-bars concentration and there is a significant decrease in the gss concentration if you see the g2 formulation that is haloperidol induced it's showing the gs gss means glutathione concentration lesser but in tbr t bars it's showing higher concentration of t bars which indicates that uh, haloperidol is, is is inducing 
uh, extraperitoneal side effect of Parkinson very good and showing the oxidative stress as more profound. But you see the result of G5 and G5 in case of T-bars. In case of glutathione, G5 is there is an increase in the glutathione concentration as compared to G2. There is a significant difference between G2 and G5. And if you see the T-bars level also, G2 is uh, having T-bars level very high, but G5 is very low as compared to G1 and G5. So this means that whenever we are using the drug loaded chitosan nanoparticles showing the profound effect very clear effect and it means we are showing the antioxidant effect as well but if g3 and g4 is also showing that effect g3 and g4 this g3 and g4 is also showing that effect but not much profound as compared to as compared to g5 and one more uh, parameter I, I will tell you about the dopamine dopamine the concentration of dopamine is very low if it is a uh, parkinson is there so see the haloperidol in use having 10.94 nanogram per ml and but normal saline is 21.87 but if you see our nanoparticle means the haloperidol co-treated with the bromocuprin chitosan nanoparticle is showing 20.65 which is having a there is no significant difference between normal saline and this one. But if you compare with the haloperidol and this, it's showing a quite significant difference. This shows that our nanoparticle is having the property to uh, increase the dopamine concentration. And third, uh, one, one very good study we did is the gamma centigraphy, centigraphy imaging. In imaging, we use, if you see uh, when we have administered the drug through the IV route, and one through the intranasal route. Then through the IV route, if you see that there is a lot of concentration in the tail region and in the in the stomach region. If you see this this three this this region, if you administer the nanoparticle through the IV route, it's showing more concentration. Why? Because maybe the RES system, reticular endothelial system, activated and it takes nanoparticle as a foreign particle and it's phagocytose and to the liver. But in case of intranasal administration you see there is more concentration in the head as compared to stomach but although there is there is a concentration in the stomach also is maybe due to the absorption for because we know that in through the intranasal route it goes to the systemic circulation as well so there is a concentration but if you compare with this with the iv graph with the eye normal with the intranasal it's showing head having head showing a lot of concentration of Radioactivity and this gamma centigraphy we use gamma centigraphy image by radio labeling of our nanoparticle we, we did radio labeling of nanoparticle by using a technetium So finally our conclusion that we have the particle size less than 200 nanometer and our haloperidol has induced the oxidative stress and behavioral deficit that resemble the PD very closely and the catalepsy and echinacea in animals receiving BRC either in solution on nanoparticle shows reversal in cataleptic and echinacea behavior, but more profound effect if you see in with the bromocriptin loaded nanoparticle. And the brain blood ratio is more for the bromocriptin loaded chitosan nanoparticle as compared to other solution. And DTI and DT, DTI and DTP is also showing better result for the bromocriptin loaded chitosan nanoparticle as compared to solution. So that's all about my presentation. Thank you very much. And once again, I would like to thank organizer for inviting me for as a speaker. Thank you very much.